In less than two weeks' time, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is set to address a joint session of Congress. It's a speech that's gained a lot of attention after President Obama made it clear he will not meet with the Prime Minister and Vice President Biden will not attend the speech. Ladies and gentlemen, the Prime Minister of the State of Israel, Benjamin Bibi Netanyahu. The Prime Minister's visit has been divisive from the start, as House Speaker Boehner opted not to clear the invitation with the White House, giving Netanyahu a major platform to weigh in on U.S. foreign policy, including talks with Iran. I wanted to make sure that uh, the, there was no interference. There's no secret here in Washington uh, about the animosity uh, that uh, this White House has for Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, I, I frankly didn't want them getting in the way and quashing uh, what I thought was a real opportunity. I'm going to Washington because as Prime Minister of Israel, it's my obligation to do everything in my power to prevent the conclusion of a bad deal that could threaten the survival of the state of Israel. Current U.S. negotiations seek to limit Iran's nuclear enrichment capability, but not ban it altogether. And that's an idea Netanyahu has been strongly speaking out against. It would allow Iran to build an industrial capability to enrich uranium that could provide the fuel for many bombs in the coming years. Now, mind you, I'm not opposed to any deal with Iran. I'm opposed to a bad deal with, with Iran. And I believe this is a very bad deal. Critics of the visit say that Netanyahu is motivated by politics as well as he's now up for re-election. And that's the main reason that President Obama cites for not meeting with the prime minister during his visit. Joining me now is Chuck Freilich, Israel's former deputy national security advisor and now a senior fellow at the Harvard Kennedy School. Chuck, welcome. Hi. So you say that uh, Netanyahu's visit could be a serious blow to the U.S.-Israel relationship. Why is that? Well, I think the timing of the visit was off. And it became one which was politicized between the Democrats and the Republicans in the United States. And Israel has always been a completely bipartisan issue in the U.S. As a matter of fact, every Israeli government, Israel's establishment, has always done everything to keep it a bipartisan uh, issue. And that's not what happened this time. It became part bipartisan. It became partisan. And that's for a big mistake for Israel. So you think John Boehner, the Speaker of the House, is actually trying to use this visit to drive a wedge, right, between American Jews and the Democratic Party? I think so. And I don't and Israel played into that, and that's a mistake which is unfortunate. Now, if that is Boehner's goal, uh, what is Netanyahu's goal? Because I think a lot of people believe that he simply does want to prevent the U.S. from reaching an overly lax deal with Iran. But you think there's something else at play? Well, there's no doubt that the prime minister is more than sincerely committed to trying to prevent Iran from going nuclear. And he believes that the deal, which seems to be emerging, is a fundamentally misguided one. And as such, it's his duty to come to the United States and make the case. The timing two weeks before the elections in Israel, I think, is where the mistake was, and that allowed it to become a politicized issue. What do you think of the deal that does seem to be emerging as someone who used to be deputy national security advisor? Does it give you pause? It certainly gives me pause, because Iran will remain a, from what we know of the agreement, Iran will remain a nuclear threshold state. Now, that's, a, that, that's, a, that's a mouthful, what I just said. That's diametrically opposite to what the United States was trying to do just a year or two ago, and it's certainly, of course, opposite to what Israel would like to do today. The real question is what the alternatives are. The administration seems to believe that this is the best that they can do. It's not what they want to do. It's the best they can do. The prime minister believes that this best is simply unacceptable because Iran will remain a nuclear threshold state. I want to make sure that our viewers who might not know these terms of art know what a nuclear threshold state means. And I also want to make sure I know what it means. What is, it, what is a nuclear threshold state exactly? Well, I don't know that there's a precise definition. But in this case, what I mean is that Iran, uh, depending on which one of the experts you want to choose, will need only about three months to have enough highly enriched uranium for a first bomb, and will then need maybe a year to weaponize it. So we're talking in order of a year and a quarter. That's nothing. That means that they've got a nuclear capability for all practical purposes today. And that's why this agreement is potentially so dangerous. I want to read a, uh, a quote from Elie Wiesel, the uh, Nobel Peace Prize laureate. He had this to say about Netanyahu's upcoming speech. He asked, will you join me in hearing the case for keeping weapons from those who preach death to Israel and America? 
The poll data that I've seen suggests that, on the one hand, a majority of Americans think that John Boehner should not have issued this invitation to the prime minister. I've seen another poll which indicates that a majority of Americans uh, want to hear what the prime minister has to say and believe he should be able to say it. What's your sense of how public opinion breaks down in Israel on this visit? Well, first of all, I'm totally surprised we have a case of conflicting polls, because that's, <laughs> that's never happened before. I think the opinion in Israel is mixed. On the one hand, people want the prime minister to make the case because it is so overwhelmingly important. And it's important to Israel, it's important to the United States, and I think it's important to international security as a whole. And I think there's also a great deal of concern in Israel that the specific timing and the way that this uh, speech was arranged caused harm to the U.S.-Israeli relationship. I think sometimes people in the United States aren't quite aware of how much importance people in Israel attach to the relationship with the U.S. It's, for most people, probably the foremost uh, objective of Israeli foreign policy. Do you think that the visit will actually happen, or do you think there will be sort of a convenient cancellation at the last minute? I think at this point it's probably too late for the prime minister to back out, even if he wants to, and he says that he doesn't want to. Let me ask you about something else that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has done recently that has raised eyebrows. I'm talking about his calls after the attacks in Paris on the uh, Charlie Hebdo offices, uh, and then the, attack, uh, the attacks in Copenhagen on this free speech discussion and outside a, a synagogue in Copenhagen. His call to European Jews to come to Israel and his statement that Israel is preparing for a mass emigration of European Jews. Uh, what is your read on what the Prime Minister is? Actually, we have some sound of uh, the Prime Minister making this call. Let's take a listen. Of course, Jews deserve protection in every country, but we say to Jews, to our brothers and sisters, Israel is your home. We are preparing and calling for the absorption of mass immigration from Europe. We call on the absorption of mass immigration from Europe. And I would like to tell all the European Jews and all Jews wherever they are, Israel is the home of every Jew. Were you surprised by those comments? No. I think the prime minister is expressing Israel's fundamental reason for existing. It's les d'Etre, which is to be a home for the Jewish people, not just to be a haven for Jews in distress around the world, but a pretty wonderful place to live. Most people in the United States, uh, their exposure to Israel is probably through the negative things that they read in the press. The fact is it's a pretty wonderful place to live in as well. And so we're certainly trying to encourage Jews from uh, Europe or from anywhere in the world uh, to move to Israel, to certainly support the prime minister on that. Let me ask you, when the prime minister makes comments like that publicly, um, at a time when there does seem to be increasing incidents of anti-Semitic incidents around uh, Europe, does that in any way run the risk of having a counterproductive effect and sending a message to perhaps anti-Semitic individuals in Europe that, oh, you know, Jews don't belong here, they belong in Israel, and you know, therefore, we have license to harass them or treat them badly? Or am I overthinking this? Well, I think the anti-Semites are going to be anti-Semites in any event. Does this feed into their rhetoric a little bit? Maybe. I don't think so. I think the important thing is to stress Israel's role as a homeland for the Jewish people. What is the prime minister's political situation right now? We know he's up for re-election in a short period of time. How much of a threat does he face politically? Well, the elections are going to be very close. Okay, no, nobody can uh, forecast exactly, but it's clear that we're talking a difference of a couple of seats in the Knesset either way, and that will make all the difference in terms of who can form the next coalition. The issue here isn't so much about winning Netanyahu or his opponent. No one's going to win this election. It's going to be so close, a seat or two. The question is who can form the next coalition, and I think Netanyahu will probably better be better positioned to do that. In closing, I have to ask you, and it's a huge question, I imagine, but what is the source of this antipathy between Netanyahu and Obama that we have seen played out over the last several years? Do you know why their relationship has been so rocky? I think there are a variety of reasons. I think there have been a whole number of mistakes on both sides, actually from the beginning of the first uh, Obama administration. Both sides have mishandled it. Unfortunately, I don't see improvement in the remaining two years of the Obama administration, but I hope that the next one, whoever it is, uh, that at that time Israel will do what it has to do to improve the relationship. There's nothing more important, Israel. All right, Chuck Freilich, thank you. Thank you.